going on guys? John here. Hey, for disc golf porn. Hey, we're doing a disc golf course today. We're doing uh, Roots up in uh, North Salt Lake. It's located on about 11th North and Redwood Road. Um, pretty cool course. It's an old golf course that was converted into, originally it was a disc golf course, converted into a golf course. Now it got converted back into a disc golf course. We are still have a little controversy as to whether it's going to get taken out or not, but kind of hoping that we get to keep it and whatnot. Um, this course is a little different. The tee pads are a little different. I'll give you a view of them there. We're at hole one right now. The hole goes out straight and comes back to the right, so it kind of follows the fence line. If you see that tree out there, it'll come back to the right, and so that's what we're going to be doing. So anyway, let's get throwing and see how we do today. It's a little windy out today, so we'll see how it goes. It'll be fun, though. I enjoy. Again, we got another snowstorm, so... It's one of those things I just have to play in the snow and do the best that I can. Anyway, teeing off here on one. And uh, it, like I said, it dog legs right. It's probably about two, 270, maybe 300 feet. So we'll play it, play this round, see how it goes. And uh, hopefully we can get this up and start getting you guys some videos and whatnot. Um, again, if you guys have any questions about stuff, feel free to ask. And, uh, I'll get to them as fast as I can. Anyway, here we go, guys. Oh, I didn't hold it, so it came out of the tree, unfortunately. Don't know if you saw it there fall or not, but... Um, Salt Lake's pretty cool. It's not a bad place to live. Um, I've lived here off and on probably for 30 years. And... Uh, I love it here, man. Lots of lots of things to do other than just disc golf. I, that's my main thing. Um, see if you can see the mountains a little bit. Another view of the mountains in a different perspective. And uh, let's go from there. See how it goes today, guys. Um, I got addicted to disc golf from a uh, buddy of mine moved here from California if you or uh, about 25, 30 years ago, and. Uh, he just got me hooked on it. It just, uh, it's become my addiction. It currently is my addiction. And I just, it's something I really enjoy doing. Um, this course has Mach 3 baskets, if I'm correct. They're a little taller on the rim and stuff. I'll give you a picture of them up here in just a little bit. Once we get up here and, uh, throw to it. So we're throwing, I don't know if you can see it now or not, but we got around the tree. The tree's kind of in our way for this hole, but let's get around it the best we can. Hopefully make our par on this. Ah, oh, limb's right in my way. It's a broken off branch, so it's kind of a pain in the butt. So we'll see what happens here. Come on back. Come on back. It's going to be a tough par, but we'll get it. Anyway, guys, um... This I throw a lot are Daedalus. They're, uh, I want to say they're not real overstable. Um, and if you guys have questions about how to look up discs and stuff, I can kind of give you a clue as to do that. But a uh, Daedalus is a real stable disc. Um, once they're broke in, you can turn them right pretty good. And I can hold them left, kind of like this. Here, I'll show you. I hold them like this, and when I throw, they tend to flip up like that. So. Just to give you an idea how they work for me. So there's our first shot of the basket. So you can see what they are. They're real nice baskets out here. Um, they got a real high lip. And uh, they're kind of a pain in the butt to try to get into sometimes. But it's all good. Fun times, man. Let's see if we can put this in for our par. Oh, hit the top of the rim of the basket and fell out, but oh well, it's all good. And we did it again. Anyway, guys, that's hole one. See you on the next hole. All right, guys, here we are. We're on hole two now. 
Um, it's another dog leg. As you can see, the tee pads aren't very big, but they're clear today. We've got a little snow on the ground, but I don't care. I'm just in the mood to play disc golf. I was able to get out of what I was doing earlier and uh, just throwing some discs. This one comes around and goes around the trees here. Once we get around the corner, you'll see it. It's another dog leg right. Um, this course is pretty big. I believe if I checked on it last, it's about 8,900 feet. So it's, it's, it's a pretty long course. Um, it's a lot of fun. I'll be throwing a uh, rock on this, a broken rock. I can get it to go right and it, it's kind of a mid-range disc for me. So let's see if we can get this to fly the way we want it to. Oh, throw it into the trees. That's not where you want to go. So let's throw another one, see how it goes, see if we can get this to go a little bit better. I'll be throwing a uh, a uh, champion leopard on this one, just to give you guys see. I figure I'd start showing you some of the discs I throw and stuff too, guys. So let's just hopefully we can get this to fly the way we want it to. That first shot, we're not going to count that for a hole too. So again, I'm out here just doing videos, just so you can see what we offer as far as disc golf courses out here, guys. This one's again called Roots. I'm not sure if I specified that. It's up in North Salt Lake. I got it around that time, so I'll show you the basket once we get up here a little bit. Um, I just became addicted to disc golf the first few times I went out, and then I just I practiced a lot. There's a lot of practice. There's a lot of time involved in practicing for this game. Uh, to get especially to get halfway decent with it and whatnot so if you got a lot of time and you don't mind being outdoors i suggest really getting into this game if it's not something you just want to have as a something you do with your buddies and whatnot you can do that too but again it's it's a lot of fun now hopefully you can see we just came around the dog leg and now we're looking at the basket not sure if you can still see it yet uh, working on getting a second GoPro, and again, that's going to be a <coughs> deal where I set up a set up a PayPal account, and if you guys want to donate, so we can get more video and whatnot. And again, I'm willing to do videos and stuff for free. I don't charge for videos, and I won't be charging for any anything I do. So it's just to help me out, and also to help you guys out too if we want to do videos. So anyway, here we go. Come on back. So we should get our par on this. So, so far we should be just one under. This course is kind of a pain in the butt to try to get par on. Um, it's it's tough, some of the holes are real long, real tough. It's just, but again, like I said, all around it's a lot of fun. So, anyway guys, we'll put this in and then we'll see you on the next hole. All right, guys, so we're on hole three here. This one's one that goes straight out and comes back to the left. You, again, a lot on a lot of these, you won't be able to see the hole until I get up close to it. That's just unfortunately how it is. So we'll be throwing a data list again on this. I'll be throwing it uh, hopefully to get it to come back left, and hopefully the wind helps me out a little bit here. So let's we'll see how we do. This hole's probably... 410 or 15 feet I'm guessing a lot of the holes out here aren't marked as far as distance and whatnot so you kind of have to guess and after you've played some of the holes for a while and stuff you kind of get a, a good idea of what the, you're looking at on them and stuff so see how it goes come on back left baby so we got the throw we wanted on that. We should be looking pretty good at the basket from there. So see how this goes. You guys, are, I, you'll hear some of my music in the background and stuff. I just like to listen to music while I'm out playing and whatnot. So I, I'm not, 
I'm not using anyone's music on videos and stuff. I just, it's what I'm listening to while I'm playing. So it's not anything I specifically put in the videos or anything like that. So. <clears throat> not sure if you can see the basket now. Uh, we're coming around the corner here. You see a bunch of the trees up ahead and stuff. Um, there's a big tree out straight ahead of me at this point. And it's, uh, the basket's past it, probably another 20 feet, and just to the right just a little bit. Hopefully maybe if we get up there where our throw is, and we can see where we're at. Maybe give you a shot at the basket at this point. See how it goes. Again, guys, if you have a lot of questions for stuff, feel free to ask. I'm totally willing to answer anything. Um, I think I'm pretty knowledgeable in about most discs and whatnot, so let's see what happens here. So hopefully you can see the basket here through the trees straight out on the little plot flat right there, and we're going to see how we do on this. Probably better not throw a putter, though. go with my rock on this it's a little a little further than I like to throw a putter on so let's see what happens I did get up the way I wanted to scoot it up a little bit you'll get a shot at the basket up here here in a minute though as we're walking up on it and again I'm just doing videos just just so I can show all the different courses in Utah. I will be getting to all the courses here in Utah at some point and doing videos for everything. So I mean, if you guys want, fast forward through stuff so you can just kind of get a view of what all the different holes look like and stuff. I just like to do a video while I'm walking and for each hole so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm looking at while I'm playing and whatnot. So hopefully you can see the basket there at this point. And that's why I like to run the constant video so you can kind of see what we're looking at as we're going towards the basket and stuff. So This one's a harder one. Should be a par 4, but it is only a par 3. Probably will miss my par on this, so let's give it a go. Get in there. Oh, over the top. So there's the basket, guys. That's three. Put this in for bogey. I'll be at two over, but that's okay. Like I said, this whole point of these videos is to show what our courses are here. So see you on the next hole, guys. All right, guys, here we are. We're on hole four. Um, hopefully you can see the tee pads. The tee pads, are, they're just rubber mats and they're just, you know, you get, as long as they're clean to snow, the, you, get, you get great grips off of them and stuff. Hopefully you can see this hole, it's just straight out, number four. Um, it's got one of those mandatory uh, arrows that you're supposed to stay to the left of the arrow or uh, it's considered out of bounds. So this one's one of the shorter ones on this course. It's probably, I want to say about 210 feet at the most. Now let's just see how we go. I'll be throwing a Champion Leopard on this. Uh, the Champion plastic's a little more durable than a lot of plastic I use. That's mostly what I throw is Champion plastic just because it's more durable. Uh, this is a kind of a mid-range disc, so let's see what happens. Got a good shot at it. It should be sitting next to the basket if it sits down. Sit. Oh, skip past it just a little bit. So that was a great shot for this hole. And it's really going to boil down to, I throw backhand, me personally. That's, I feel like I have more control uh, when I throw and stuff. I know a lot of guys like to do the sidearm flick and stuff. I just feel like, unless the distance is in front of me, that I can't get the control out of it. So I don't flick at all. But I know, I know there's, we have a couple disc golfers that do it, and they're really good with it. So I throw left-handed on some holes. Um, it's something I'm still working on, so I'm kind of ambidextrous as far as throwing disc. 
And it's the same it's the same way to throw either way for me so that's probably why I choose that way it's like we have went a little long on this hopefully you can see the hole and you can see as we're walking and stuff so you can kind of get an idea of what we're looking at but that's the hole that's a view back at the tee pad so and again my music just what I'm listening to. It's not anything I put specifically in the videos or anything. So, anyway, here we go for our first birdie of the day, possibly. Oh, I held on to it just a little bit too long. Anyway, guys, that's hole four. We'll see you on the next hole. So here we are on five guys. It's going <clears throat> back towards the parking lot where we were, towards one. Um, it's, it's got a mandatory arrow again. I'm not sure if you can see that from where we're at. This is the tee pad, again, number five. And it's straight out from here through the trees a little bit. It's behind the last pine tree there. I don't know if you can see it straight out or not. So let's give her a go and see how she goes. Well, I'll be throwing a broken data list for this because I want it to go out and then hopefully come back a little bit right. So. We'll see how it runs. Ah, uh, it came back left on me, so, oh well. I made the mandatory at least though, so I don't have to take a penalty stroke. But again, like I said, I'm doing these more to show the course than anything. Whether I play good or not, I, I mean, it, it's only my fourth uh, round for the year, so it's going to take me a couple of weeks to get back in the form. But anyway, like I said, hopefully maybe you can see the basket at this point, see it straight out from us from here. And what's great about this course is it's all grass covered. So even if you come out and play in the snow and when the snow's gone, you're looking you're looking at it being mostly melted and stuff anyway. And so the, being on the grass, you ain't got to worry about the mud too much. So it's not too bad. Let's see if we can find our, uh, there's the basket there. We'll be shooting back over to uh, that basket over there if you can see it. I just got to get over here and find my disc. like I said unfortunately it came back left on me so here we got it give you a shot at what the disc is look or the basket's looking like what's going on a little short so Hopefully we can shoot our par. This one's probably, I want to say about 375 to maybe 400 feet. So it's a bit of a stretch. And when you're throwing in the wind and stuff, you just have to take that into consideration a little bit. I always try to throw mine about as level and flat as you can because the wind will, tends to play hit, havoc on them. So anyway, there's the basket for five guys. I'll give you a shot back now that we're here looking back at the tee pad so you can kind of get a look from both angles seeing what it looks like and whatnot so for our par he makes his par so that's good so we're shooting one over at this point so it's not too bad anyway guys see you in the next hole all right, guys, here we are. We're on six now. Uh, it's got another mandatory. you got to stay to the left of it. If you go to the right as you're throwing, unfortunately, it's out of bounds. This is a short one. I'm not sure if you can see all the trees up there, but the basket sits between a couple trees that have bees in them. Uh, I want to guess probably 220 feet on this, so let's see what happens. I'll be throwing my broken data list again for this, so we'll see what happens. We're going into a headwind, so this should be interesting. That turned it over the way I didn't want it to, and threw me into the tree, so 
But anyway, guys, I'm going to try and give you a perspective from both angles on all the holes. So that was from the tee pad going to the hole. I'll give you a shot of the hole once we get up here and looking back at the tee pad so you can kind of see what each of the holes are going to be looking at too. Plus, I also want you to see what we're looking at when we're going towards the basket. So, because I know the GoPro isn't the best as far as doing videos and stuff, but um, it's what I got and that's what I'm going to use. So. Not sure if you can see it now. It's just up through the trees. I'm behind a tree, so let's see what happens. Get around there. So I just like showing the perspective of the uh, trees and whatnot. I want you to see what I'm seeing when I'm playing and whatnot, so you can kind of get a view what all the holes are going to be like. So I just try to do each hole. I don't do much video between the holes and stuff. That way I can do other things if, as I need it and stuff. So there's the hole from where we were looking as we were walking up on it. So for par, we should throw on my putter again. I throw an AVR, a light AVR for par or for when I'm putting. That's just what I like, so. A little short. So we unfortunately bogged another one. But anyway, that's hole six, guys. See you on the next hole. Here we are on seven, guys. Just giving you a perspective of seven here. I'll be throwing my orc on this. We've got a little bit of a headwind, so I'll give you a shot out at the basket. I, you can probably see a lone tree out there. It's just past it. It's probably, I want to say, about 365 to 375 feet, somewhere right in that range. I kind of wish these were a little more marked, but they aren't. So it is what it is. And throwing in the headwind, like I said, you kind of want to keep it flat and straight. If you throw it up in the air, it's going to take it for a ride. So anyway, you guys, wish me luck. Not a great throw, but that's good enough. Like I said, I'm just trying to give you guys perspective of what we're looking at when I'm looking at stuff, so. And that's the whole purpose of this. I'm just, like I said, I'm not out to make money and stuff. I would like to get another GoPro, set it up by the basket, so we'd have, so you kind of see more what my shots look like as they were going in, just like they do in golf. Um, I know a lot of people don't watch golf, but, Anyway, this golf, this game is way addicting. Once you've been out a few times and you start to learn how to throw, it really becomes addicting. Um, me personally, I think it's more challenging than golf because you don't have a club and you have to rely on your body as your club, basically. So there's the basket, guys. There's the tree I was talking about. And we'll be throwing to it. Throw on a putter from here. Into the wind, so we'll see how this is. I should bring my heavier putter for this kind of stuff for the wind and whatnot, but come on around now, sit down. So there you go guys, that's seven. Just wanted you to see it and give you perspective back towards the T pad, which is straight out from where I'm at currently and that's hole seven for roots so anyway guys I'll see you on the next hole all right guys here we are on eight it's got another mandatory you see the orange arrow you got to stay to the right of it it's baskets through the trees hopefully you can catch a glimpse of the bright yellow on the basket from where I'm standing at least you can see the trees and you'll see it as I walk up on it unfortunately the GoPro doesn't do very well it's showing my throws and whatnot kind of wish it did maybe down the line as I you know if I get donations and stuff I can invest into some better equipment and show you guys better quality videos and stuff but till then do the best that I can with what I got so anyway this is a I want to say about 260 it goes out straight and the dog legs left around the trees so it you got a clear shot out in the clearing is probably the best place to be so here we go
on back. A little long, but it should be all right, guys. Anyway, um, I always recommend getting a bag and stuff. It's easier to carry your discs. I know a lot of guys only play with a couple of discs, so um, that's just their thing. For me, I've got several different discs I use for stuff, so I also have, you know, like I said, I carry my GoPro and other stuff too, so I'll give you a picture of my bag here in a little bit, or maybe you've already caught a glimpse of it. My bag is only about 35, 40 bucks. Some guys are real extravagant. They've got the backpacks that are, uh, they can carry 30 discs in. Personally, I don't see why I need to carry that many, but I mean, if you're playing a place where you're gonna lose a lot of this, I can see why you would do that. Anyway, there's a shot of the basket. And we're walking to the disc, so. Another shot of the basket there. And trying to give you a shot of the disc of where I landed from where we threw, so. Anyway, that's the basket. That's the tee pad where we threw back from. And uh, yeah, that's about it. I'll give you guys a shot of my ba bag here. See, it's nothing extravagant, carries discs, does what it's supposed to do, and that's what I do. So here we go. Looking at the basket from around the tree, so let's see what happens. Get the basket. Anyway, guys, that's hole eight. And uh, we'll see you on the next hole. So here we are, guys. We're on nine now. Uh, it's kind of good back towards the canal a little bit, as you can see. It's kind of a, it can be an ugly mess. You definitely don't want to go in the river here. It's straight out back behind this bushy stuff here. Not sure if you can see it through the basket, but I'll give you a shot of it once we get up there. See what we do. I want to say this is probably about 375 feet if my guess is right thrown into a headwind again this is one of those things you want to throw it keep it low keep it flat if you turn it over to the right it's going to hold it to the right so and that's what i did exactly what i wasn't supposed to Turned it to the right and it held it right. <clears throat> like I was explaining. It's one of those things you try to throw it as flat as you can. Again, I just run videos so you can see what I'm doing uh, going towards the hole so you can get a good idea of what it looks like. Um, I definitely suggest coming out to Utah and playing disc golf here. We've got a lot of, this sport's really just grown crazy like out here. We got a lot of people out here that play down. Um, we don't have a specific channel uh, dedicated to disc golf here, so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So, again, like I said, I'd eventually like to uh, get some better equipment so you can see our shots as they go. Anyway, that's hole nine. You can see it as we were walking to it. Now we're walking to our disc. As you can see, it turned to the right like I didn't want, but I didn't want to be in the canal. I've been over there, done that before. And if you get in there, you tend to lose them. So, And people tend to not call you back. That's something I suggest is putting your name and number on discs if you are starting out and stuff and you don't know. Sometimes people call you back, sometimes they won't. But anyway, there's a shot of the disc and let's give her a go. A little short. So I'll give you a shot of a uh, tee pad coming out back. So there's the tee pad that we just came from. Not sure if you can see the bench in the background. That's about where we were at. And this is the basket we're coming up on. But anyway, guys, that's hole nine. See you on 10. So here we go, guys. We're on 10 now. This is probably the longest hole on the course. Um, you will it'll be a few minutes before we'll see it. Uh, I want to say this one's about 600 feet long. So. This is definitely one that should be a par four or five, but unfortunately they make everything a par three in Utah. So anyway, we'll see how it goes. 
Also, the river's right there, if you can see it right there, so you, I definitely want to stay out of that. I don't want to lose one of my good discs. I'm throwing a broken Daedalus again on this. Oh, that tree. So we had a pretty good throw on that, not too bad. Give you the perspective of us walking to the hole, so you probably won't see it here for a couple minutes. As like I said, this is probably the longest hole on this course. And again, I want to say it's about 610 feet. Um, this course only has two place settings for each hole. So unfortunately, the variety you, you get here isn't a, quite as good as, say, somewhere like Creekside, where Creekside probably has four to five place settings for each hole, uh, pin settings. And that's probably the most diverse course that we have <clears throat> with multiple pl place settings. Anyway, if you can see the opening up ahead, the basket's just past that. We're still about another 375 feet out for our second throw. So, coming up on our disc now for our second throw. So, we shall see how this goes. See the opening up ahead? That's where we're trying to get to, so. Oh, not a bad shot. We might actually par this. This might even be a little bit shorter than 600 feet. It might even be 550, but I know it's the longest hole on the course, so. Got it, had a great second shot, so we should par it. I get better as I go along, guys, so just bear with me. I know I'm not the best disc golfer in the world by far, but I think I throw better than a lot of people, so. And again, I'm more of a casual player. I just want to show that diversity and the beauty of what we have here in Utah and whatnot. So that's why I'm doing this. So anyway, there's the basket, guys. That's 11. We just walked up onto it, got there in two throws. There, give you a perspective back. Dog legs back to right. If you can see that fence, past that fence, probably another 300 feet. So. Anyway, guys, that's 11, and we'll see you on the next hole. So here we are on 11, guys. Now, this one's a little more tricky. It's probably one of the shorter holes on the course, but as you can see, we have two orange arrows out ahead of us, and which is the mandatory. You have to go between them. So you make it to either side, it's an out of bound. You're supposed to take a stroke. Well, I'm not sure if you can see the vine on the fence up ahead, but you got to go around. There's an opening up ahead, and it comes back around. This one's only probably about... Oh, I want to say 180, 200 feet maybe. So you just try to get it through there the best that you can and hope for the best. That's the key to this though, is just making it through the opening. So we made the mandatory, actually not a bad shot till it hit the tree. So you'll see it as we get up here, guys. And again, feel free, if you like my videos, give me suggestions, let me know what you need to do. Please feel free to subscribe because I will be doing a lot more videos. Um, I'll be doing some of the tourneys that we have here and whatnot. I'll be doing some of the other really good disc golfers we here and have here and stuff. Um, I'll just be doing everything related to disc golf that I possibly can, you know, within my time that I have. Putting in time to do this and whatnot, so... Anyway, guys, we're up on the disc. You can see the opening now. Hopefully, you can see the basket right there. So, this one can be a bit tricky at times, especially if you don't make that mandatory. If you don't make the mandatory, like, you can make it a real rough day real fast. Probably went a little too far on that. That's all good, though. Anyway, guys, here I'll come out so you can see this basket from where we were. 
So there's the opening. We're going to take a look back. Hopefully you can see the arrows where you're supposed to go through. And that's 11, guys. Like I said, real short basket, but a lot of fun. But anyway, guys, see you next hole. All right, guys, so here we are. We're on 12. We're on the second longest hole of the Well, this, I want to say second or third longest hole of the course. As you can see, we got a fence to the left. Also, another fence along the left. And I'm not sure if you can see it, but that fence goes clear out to a big tree on the very edge. And the basket's over to the left about 180 feet. I want to say this one's about 480 feet. So let's give her a go and see what we got. Let's throw on my broken Daedalus again. pretty good shot should get us out there except it put us over towards the fence so it's gonna be a tough to get around the fence Again, trying to give you a perspective of what we're looking at as I'm walking and whatnot. It's what I could afford to do my videos and stuff, the GoPro. It's something I've been wanting to, I've been wanting to do this project now for quite some time. Uh, just something I'm find that hopefully people are gonna be into too. Even if it's just the group of people that I play with here in Utah, great. If it goes viral, great. Like I said, I'm just doing it just because I can. So. so anyway, there's the big fence we were looking at. So you can see the end of the fence up here, and the basket's still probably another, oh, I want to say 100 feet back behind it. Yeah, it is. So got to try to get around the fence and then come back to it. Very challenging hole. Like I said, just trying to get it out in the open right now. And I'll show you the basket as we're walking up here past the fence. I'll have to give you a perspective right now back to where we were. And I'll give you a shot of what we're looking at. So this is where the fence ends, is right, right where I'm gonna be standing now give you perspective back where we came from the trees and whatnot and there's the basket right there to the left so this is 12 again I want to say it's probably about 480 maybe even more than that and it's a very challenging basket now we just got to find our disc So there you go. Do you see it? There, that's what we're looking at. So again, this should probably be a four or five, but it's only a par three. So this will be our fourth shot coming up on it. So there's the basket right there, guys. Just trying to give you a view of that. There's where we just came around. And again, like I said, real challenging hole. So a lot of fun. Anyway, guys, that's 12. See you on the next hole. So here we are, guys. We're on 13 now. This one's got a fence that goes along here. Basket's out past the fence. Now, there's two ways you can go. I, Me, personally, I like to try to go out in the open as best I can, dog leg back left. Or you can take the fence line like I know a lot of people do and just go straight for it. Not sure if you can see the basket from here, but it's straight out by next to a deadwood tree. So give her a go and see what we're doing. I throw a lot of my Daedalus on a lot of these holes because it goes out right and comes back left. So Not too bad. We'll definitely take that shot. There's a lot of, during the summer, when it gets warm out here and stuff, there's a lot of shade, a lot of uh, benches you can take breaks on and stuff so 
Again, like I said, this is a great course. Um, unfortunately, where it is, they possibly will rip this out for some development, some kind of development, which is unfortunate because this is probably my second favorite course in Utah. So it is what it is. Supposedly, they're supposed to be taking this out and giving us another course somewhere else out in the Southern Valley of where I live here and whatnot. So we'll see what, what happens. Anyway, there's the end of the fence. There's one tree. It's probably about another, oh, 70 feet from the tree. Give me a shot of what it looks like coming up on it here. So here in the next few videos, I will be, I'll have a PayPal sent up so that if you want to donate money to me, I won't be keeping the money for anything. All I'll be doing is putting it back into cameras and more equipment to do more videos. So hopefully if that's something you're interested in, feel free to, you know, 50 cents, a dollar, $10, a hundred dollars, whatever you feel like donating, you know, and just so you know, it's all tax right. You can use it all as a tax write off too. So. So there's the basket guys. I'll give you a view of what it looks like coming back. Hopefully you can see it back in the corner back there. So a little short. So that's 13 guys um, out next to the deadwood tree, like I was saying. And we'll see you on the next hole. So here we are guys on 14. You kind of see some of the holes that we've already thrown. We're throwing back towards some of the tee pads we've thrown from. Um, this one's probably about 200 and, uh, I want to say 250 feet. This hole actually has a couple placements. This is just straight out. So let's give it a go and see what we're doing. Again, I'm still throwing my data list. So let's go from there. Again, just trying to give you what the course looks like as we're going. I know I'll probably hash over stuff a lot. Um, just all I can say, man, is it's just a lot of fun. I probably spend anywhere from, oh, I don't know, 20, 20 to 30 hours a week disc golfing. That's just, it's my passion. It's what I enjoy doing. So, And if you have something that you really enjoy doing, Man, enjoy it, because if you don't, you're just not going to be happy in life. When I'm out disc golfing, I lose, I lose perspective on everything else and just don't care about anything else, because all I'm doing is disc golfing and I'm doing what I enjoy, so. And now videos are going to be something I really enjoy doing, too. But anyway, let's give you a shot of the 14 here. Hopefully you can see it there, show you back where we looked just threw from hopefully you can see the bench if you can see the bench that's about where we threw from so again it's an awesome course wish they weren't going to take it out but there you go guys see you on 15. so here we are on 15 guys we're just about done got four holes left this one's along the canal you definitely do not want to go to the right yeah i'll just give you a shot of it there i've been in that drink more times than i can count but anyway this is 15 this one hopefully you can see it straight out it's only about, say about 325 feet. So you want to definitely stay out of the river if you can on this. So let's give it a go. We're throwing into a tailwind. When you throw into a tailwind, you kind of have to get it up a little better or else the wind drops them a lot. So I'll be throwing a beat up Daedalus on this. And it's dropping it, just like I said. Again, there's a shot of my bag in case you guys were still wondering what the bag looked like. So, so here we're going from the tee pad towards the basket now. Get a view of what we're looking at. We're still walking along the canal. Not a fun place to be. Um, it's pretty deep, so if you end up throwing something in there, you probably most likely lost it. These, these next two holes are along the canal here. 
and uh, yeah, they're pretty ugly. I'd much rather stay way to the right of this, or to the left of this, as opposed to the right. Losing the disc is never fun. But it happens, you know, so. Um, disc run anywhere from about, used disc run about five to ten dollars. Brand new disc can run anywhere from upwards of fifteen to twenty-one, twenty-two dollars, just depending on where you live at. So there's the basket, guys. Give you a shot of it there. There's where we just walked from. Hopefully you can see the bench back there. That's where we just were. And we're walking to our basket, or to our disc now, so. That's a shot of one of the other baskets that we already played. And again, like I said, I just, I try to stay out of the river as much as possible, so. That's just my thing. It's probably going to be short again. I want it to be short, so. Anyway, guys, that's uh, that's 15. Give you a shot back looking at it again. So, see you on the next hole, guys. So here we go, guys. We're still on the canal. We're on 16 now. We got three holes left. This one's straight out too. It runs along the canal, so you got to be real careful. Not sure if you can see it out there with the bright yellow basket. This one runs about two. Probably 245. I'll be throwing a broken daedalus again just because I would want to stay out of the drink. Now sit down. Probably threw it a little long, but that's all right. I'd rather be a little long than in the damn drink. So again, guys, hopefully this is giving you a perspective of what I'm looking at when I'm playing and stuff. It's mostly what I wanted. And eventually, we'll be getting uh, more cameras and hopefully more people to help me and stuff. Again, if you feel like donating and whatnot, uh, currently my email address is H-E-L-L-S-A-P-I-E-N at Hotmail. So if you want to get a hold of me directly there, you can. And feel, feel free to leave comments under the video or you can email directly, which again, that's hellsapien at hotmail.com. Um, my channel is called Disc Golf Porn. Hopefully we'll get to a point where we'll be able to show you some of the crazy shots that we get and stuff. Just like pornos do when they show you some of the crazy positions they do when they're doing porn. So anyway, guys, that's the basket there. 16. There it is again, looking at it, coming back from the other way. And there's my desk over there. Anyway, guys, see you on 17. Here we go, guys. We're on 17 now. Two holes left. This one, I want to say, is roughly probably about 250 feet out. As you can see, there's a bunch of trees up ahead. It's kind of sitting in the middle of the trees. Let's give her a go and see what she does. I'll throw it right in the ground and that's the thing about golf man if you if you're any kind of golfer you know what I'm talking about you're gonna have good days and bad days that's just how it is unfortunately you just try to get as consistent as you can so that when you do have your great games they're great and when you have your bad ones you're just like oh well I'm out disc golfing so See where we landed. Landed way short on this. Hopefully you can see the basket just up ahead. But we'll be walking up to it here in just a minute. That throw was terrible. That's all good. Like I said, I just come out to have fun. I don't even worry about what other people think. And that's what happens when you turn it over. Then catches it and it goes where it wants. Anyway, I'll give you guys a shot of what the basket looks like up here so you don't have to watch my terrible game much longer. I think I'm at four or five over right now into the wind so it's all good I'm just having fun. I just want to do a video for Roots because if this is one of the last few times we ever get to see it or 
Oh, I just wanted to know it was here at one point. So there's the basket, guys. Give you a shot of where we just came from. And again, that's 17 at roots. So here we are on 18, guys. This is the last hole in the course. Um, I want to say this one's probably about 400 feet. Um, it dog legs to the right just a little bit. Um, you'll see it as we get out there and stuff. So let's see what happens. Again, the wind's dropping everything, so kind of got to get it up a little bit or it's going to throw it right into the ground. And I got it up and it got a pretty good D, some good D. Unfortunately, it went towards one of the other baskets, but that's okay. So anyway, guys, the game's a lot of fun. I recommend it to anyone. If you're only in to get into it initially you're probably only into it about 30 bucks if you just want to buy a couple of discs and go out you're not looking at any green fees you don't have to pay any fees to go out and play 99 percent of the courses that you will play are free uh, that's what makes this game great and real real uh fun to play because you know anything that's fun can be free so you don't have to spend a lot of money onto it the only thing you gotta spend money on, like I said, is you just gotta spend money on this. So, anyway, um, give you guys. I kind of landed over by five where we were originally, but I'm just trying to walk towards it so you guys can see it, maybe. Kind of get a view of what we're looking at and stuff. I'll walk over and grab the disc, and we'll go over and look at this final basket, so you can kind of get a view of what it looks like and what it's sitting around. on a putter for this so we'll see what happens get up there a little short but it'd be all right give you guys a view of the basket going up here and then going back also towards the keypad so you can kind of see what it looks like going back that way so that's 18 guys like I said, this course is a lot of fun. It's really long, a lot of fun. Uh, there's the basket, they're looking going back towards the tee pad. And then there's the basket. So just to give you an idea what it looks like. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed these videos. Hope you enjoy these videos. And uh, I'll be doing more, like I said. Um, as soon as I get my PayPal account set up, I'll get that listed onto my YouTube channel. Um, right now, you can look me up. You can probably either look it up under Disc Golf Porn or John Deering. And that's D-E-A-R-I-N-G. Um, feel free to subscribe to my videos and stuff, guys. I'll be doing more instructional videos. I'll probably be doing how I throw, um, how I putt and stuff. And just doing more anything about disc golf and all about disc golf all day long. Anyway, guys, hope this was fun for you as it was for me. I'll talk to you guys soon. And uh, cheers.